Hey girlfriend, this is Jan James. Welcome to the Hope After Breast Cancer podcast, where women who have endured breast cancer learn to have fulfillment over frustration, clarity over confusion, and faith over fear. We tackle the issues that many of our sisters face after a breast cancer diagnosis, from brain fog to fear of recurrence, from menopause to sex after breast cancer. This is the place to learn how to have hope after breast cancer. So strap yourself in. Welcome to the Hope After Breast Cancer podcast. Hi everyone, Jan James again with Hope After Breast Cancer. So glad to be able to um, to introduce you again to Kathy Cates. And she is our pelvic floor therapist expert for Hope After Breast Cancer. And we're so grateful to have her here today from Boston. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Jan. Great to be here. Thanks. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, today we're going to talk about vaginal moisturizing. Now, I don't know, a lot of us talk about lubes, but moisturizing is a different deal. So what's the difference in those, Kathy? Great, great question. So lubricant is for when you want to reduce the friction and moisturizing is for just like general hydration of the tissue. So think about you moisturize your face, right? And you need to moisturize your vulva and your vagina. You do. Nobody talks about it. You may not be walking around saying, oh, I feel so dry. Or you might, you might, but I'm telling you, you need to moisturize. Crazy. It's just, yeah, because nobody says that is right. (laughs) So can you go through that a little bit with us? Totally. And I will say you need to moisturize thoughtfully. You need to moisturize with no chemicals of concern because there's a lot, there should be nothing warming, cooling, like, no. You need only like the purest kind of ingredients that you could find. So I'll give you a perfect example. Like I have, my colleague and I have done a lot of research on this and it's challenging because it's not regulated by the FDA. Mm -hmm. That we could have a whole nother discussion about why it's not, but that's for another time. So on our philosophy is like, there's so much garbage out there that our job is to find you things at different price points that will work. So for moisturizing, so my mom also had breast cancer, premenopausal. Um, she's now 84, which is totally amazing. Um, and she, after her treatment, like many years after had some pelvic floor issues. So not really related to the cancer, but my mother is also very cough conscious. So she has some vaginal atrophy and she taught me pure vitamin E oil from CVS. My mother has used it. Like if you're, this is, if you're comfortable putting a finger inside of your vagina, so pure vitamin E oil, nothing else in it. And when my mother went to the gynecologist very recently because she was having some tightness in the the pelvic floor and I wanted to make sure there wasn't something else going on and it was during COVID and I couldn't go to see her. um, They said, oh my God, wow, you're 84. You have the best looking vagina like we've seen in like in any, almost any postmenopausal woman. So way to go for my mom. So vitamin E, vitamin E. And I'm, Yeah. And so then also my mother also, because she didn't want to spend the money, was doing some dilator therapy and put together a lubricant. I think she found it online with like cornstarch and water. I'm happy to send you the recipe. And she said, it works great. I think you just have to heat it up in the microwave. So that's like the very DIY, you know, Um, and you can also do, yeah, I'll just, I'll be happy to just send you some resources we can also use so that's like the very diy right then there's like the more moderate sort of you know there's like a wonderful uh vitamin e beeswax and cocoa butter like a little suppository it might be like the size of your like index finger fingernail maybe again if you're comfortable putting something inside and so totally wonderful for anybody who can't use estrogen, right? Like there's, there's so many things we can use that, and to moisturize that do not involve estrogen. 
And that's, you know, like maybe $14 for 16 of those suppositories three times a week. Super helpful. Big thing to know about internal moisturizing is that, and especially if like you're, you really want to do it at night or at a time when you're then going to lay down because you will have a little bit of leaking out. And then like, that's uncomfortable. It's like you put it in before you go to work and then you're like, oh, God, like, oh, right. right. Things that people don't say. So I learned that from patients. I've personally learned that just do it at night. If that's a time, like do it at a time when you're going to lay down for a while. Um, and then let me see. So that's like, so, and vitamin E is great. You know, like vitamin E is super, super soothing. And wow. you, the cocoa butter, the beeswax, like as, this is assuming like you don't have any allergies or anything like that, but, and also it's very, very neutral, very benign, you know? And I also just learned about, you can use for a lubricant for intercourse, another DIY, you can use one part aloe vera and one part coconut oil. Oh, interesting. So we're going to do another video specifically about lubricants for intercourse, so, and we'll, but we'll include that there too. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And, um, the, uh, so that's sort of like the medium sort of price point. And then you can also work, you can, with your nurse practitioner or your doctor, work with a compounding pharmacist because you can do a really nice, like compounded hyaluronic acid in like a really soothing, non-toxic base. And hyaluronic acid is awesome for people that can't do hormones, can't do estrogen because as Dan and I were chatting about, you know, when we're premenopausal or before we had cancer, you can think about like that lining of your vaginal wall and like it's plump and it's like juicy and like really well hydrated. And it kind of, it's like this, right? Like maybe an inch or two inches between your thumb and index finger. And then once you don't have those hormones on board, you're going through treatment or you're in menopause or whatever, then that lining of the vagina looks like Right. So we use the estrogen to try to pump it up, but hyaluronic acid and vitamin E, they do a great job of like mm. hyaluronic acid. You'll find it in your face serums, right? It's a collagen booster. So again, like, there you go, right? Like it works really, really well. Um, the commercial ones that are available, like a halo gyne, that's a brand that a lot of people use that is concerning because it has some Stuff in there that's not healthy for your vagina. Appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Yeah. A very common one that we ourselves used to use in our practice. And then one of my patients was like, you know, there's some bad stuff in there. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. So we don't do it anymore. So that's where a compounding pharmacist and I'm happy, you know, can be really helpful. And I think for that, and you can get them to do like an aloe vera and vitamin E, you can get them to do a hyaluronic acid. Um, that I think we're looking maybe for uh, probably about three times a week. I want to say like, it depends, like probably between like 45 and $60. So definitely a higher price point, but can be super, super helpful. So would you say better results than the lesser priced items? Faster I results? I don't know. I think I'm also, I'm so conscious about price point that I think right. you have what works for you. Yeah, no, that's okay. I, and I just was talking to a gal yesterday that's using the hyaluronic acid and has really yeah. been happy with it. Can yeah. I ask, um, like, this is a, a personal question. A lot of the girls know that I was diagnosed with vaginal atrophy. So, um, and sex, like the, the wall of my vaginal wall is so thin now that any time we even attempt sex, um, I get, it's, there's bleeding because the wall, you know, tears and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, even with vaginal atrophy, these kinds of things would be great to use. Oh, totally. Great. Yes. Okay. <laughs> because, you know, if your lining is like this, mm -hmm. if you use something like this three times a week, probably you're going to get it to be a little bit more like that. Right. Have the bleeding will hook you up with a good lubricant. Mm -hmm. We have a whole, so many thoughts about lubricants, but that's for another time. Um, yeah, and I also, you know, even for people, 
again, I think compounding pharmacists can be so helpful because there are different kinds of estrogen that they can compound for us, right? And it doesn't have, yes. And it doesn't have, like in Europe, they're, they're like so far ahead of us. And it doesn't have to be the estradiol, right? It doesn't, there, there's a mellower kind. That's real. That's, right. yeah, that a lot. And again, this is in concert with your on, oncologist, but we have like this massive fear of any estrogen. And I totally understand. And I'm not saying like, and you need for this prescription for all this stuff. And you need to work very closely with your oncology team. However, you know, like, we can compound like this more benign estrogen that's estriol with like a tiny bit of testosterone mm -hmm. that are for your vaginal atrophy. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that's good. That was a question I had too. You can't just walk into a compound pharmacy with a recipe and say, hey, can you make this for me? You need a script for it, right? No, you need a prescriber and you need to be in contact with your oncologist. Okay. If you're anything other than the triple negative and even with a triple negative you do yeah yeah like i was all very in very much in contact with my oncologist yeah so. i actually think that the community at large is really there is a lot of fear about estrogen i was er positive but i would guess that i mean just because we know that that is such a fuel for cancer i think all of us need to be really wary of anything Totally, but when you really dive into the literature, and I'm just starting to learn about this mm -hmm. the kind of estrogens, that estriol, I think, is something that could be potentially very, very helpful, even for people with ER, PR positive. Okay, good to uh, know. Yeah. And so that's awesome. So that's great. So ladies, what we'll do is we'll, um, you know, Kathy has talked about a lot of different options. We are going to include links to those in the article along with this video. So just look below for that. And um, Kathy, <laughs> I just, I am just tickled to know you and so grateful that you're willing to educate us about everything that you are doing to help women. So thank you so much. Appreciate you so much. Wow. I'm just, I'm blown away. I'm, I'm learning right along with you ladies. So, so we'll sign off for now. This is Jan James from Hope After Breast Cancer. We'll see you next time. Girlfriend, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. I hope you found some nuggets to encourage you and give you hope. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. You never want to miss an episode and we'd love to know how we're doing. So please be sure to leave us a review. Until next time, this is Jan James encouraging you to remember there is hope after breast cancer. See you next time.